Seatbelts on, kids. It is time for Money Power Politics. Markets expected to take a big hit this morning as investors officially grapple with retaliation from China on trade. China will hike tariffs from 10 percent to 25 percent on $60 billion worth of U.S. imports. That increase will go into effect June 1st. Now, despite the ongoing trade war, the president is still boasting about the best economy and unemployment numbers. According to the president, he is solely responsible for the country's current economic success. But is he ready to take the fall for an economic downturn? My next guest is predicting a ticking economic time bomb is ready to explode likely before the 2020 election. Joining me now, the author of that very special piece, correspondent for Vanity Fair, and my dear friend Bill Cohen, CNBC's Kayla Tausche, and Congressman Dan Kildee back with me. William, your piece says, yes, the president unleashed animal spirits with the big tax cut, with deregulation, but you say that low interest rates are going to be the undoing of the U.S. economy. And we need to remind our audience, this best economy has the same profile as the economy we had when the president won. So a couple, couple, couple things here. First of all, uh, you know, as a former trader, the way markets work and the way interest rates, low interest rates can force traders, can force investors to take risks that they misprice and, therefore, and therefore start buying securities that they shouldn't buy, overpaying for securities. And it's happening all the time. Frankly, it's been happening for 10 years since the Fed Look did the, the right debt thing. Market. Exactly, which has exploded to $9 trillion. The other thing, uh, Stephanie, is let's face it, the best thing this president has going for him now is the economy. You have to give him his due at the moment. Yes, it started during the Obama administration, and President Obama did a great job managing the com economy through the financial crisis. But when this economy turns, and it will, this is his last best hope. Uh, I think he's going down as a result of that. And this is the issue. Congressman, Xi Jinping knows. Xi Jinping does not need to get reelected. He's going to be in that seat forever. He knows that the president needs a winning economy in order to be elected in 2020. China trade reps went home on Friday night. Xi Jinping doesn't tweet. He reads every single tweet the president puts out. He can now exact surgical revenge on our economy, simply stop buying things, go after specific states. He could look to Mitch McConnell and say, hmm, what am I going to do to the state of Kentucky? How vulnerable is the president to China when it comes to trade, given how dependent on a winning economy he is? Well, I think he's really vulnerable, particularly when he sort of sets up this frame as if he is this master negotiator, when at close look, he's playing chess or checkers, I'm sorry, with people who are playing three-dimensional chess. He, he's a day trader. He's looking at the moment. He pushes the Fed on interest rates, for example, and doesn't really do anything to deal with what I think in the, in the long term is fundamentally important, and that is reinvest. Reinvest in skills, reinvest in infrastructure. China obviously has made the decision that they're going to go in that direction, and they have the patience to see it through. This president has the patience of a gnat. But a reminder to Joe Biden, China is a superpower and a huge competitor of ours. Leslie Picker is on the floor. Leslie, where are things open? Hey, Steph, things are looking down significantly today. The S&P down by 1.7 percent, Dow down by about the same amount. And the Nasdaq here, people are really taking some money off the table in those higher risk tech names. That's down more than uh, 2 percent, 2.4 percent today. Uh, a huge part of the declines that we're seeing today have uh, dir are directly in response to what's going on with the U.S. and China trade relations. Uh, a lot of investors out there have been concerned about all this uncertainty and then that's just really coming to the forefront today. Okay, Kayla, it's not uncertainty anymore. Talk about the misinformation the president is putting forth. Who pays the tariffs is not subjective, it's objective. Subjectively, we could argue, do tariffs work? But objectively, we know that it's the U.S. consumer and U.S. businesses that are pay for it. Finally, we saw Larry Kudlow reluctantly admit that yesterday. How much of a big deal is that to markets, to consumers, that the president is waging a trade war and doesn't understand the basics of trade? Well, clearly the president was watching Larry Kudlow on the Sunday shows yesterday and is tweeting in response to that this morning saying, you know, in, in sort of acknowledging what Kudlow was saying um, and saying that uh, U.S. companies don't have to pay these tariffs if they're willing to make their products here in the okay, United States hold, or hold import on, please, them from please. a country that does not have tariffs. So he's trying to beat around the bush there by saying, you know, that U.S. companies can avoid them without having to say, yes, U.S. companies 
companies are paying them. Larry Kudlow tried to thread uh, a very delicate needle yesterday by saying that um, you know both sides will pay this and that China will pay somewhat indirectly in a hit to GDP and hit to other economic indicators there without saying, yes, China is actually writing a check for these things, as the president has said in the past. Except, of course, he didn't thread a needle. That needle pricked the president's argument. Bill Cohen, there are not empty t-shirt factories sitting in the rust belt of the United States with factory workers just waiting to turn the lights on and fire the machines back up. How can the president make an argument like this? Because, I mean, it's been laid bare now with, with the New York Times stories, as we've known for a long time. He's just an awful businessman. He's been a terrible businessman his whole life. He's relied on other people's money. He's taken advantage of that. He's had huge losses. I don't think he understands business. He may have gone to Wharton. He certainly wasn't the top of his class like he claims he was. He does not even understand the concept of net present value, which is a basic concept of finance. So, you know, he has been on this disinformation information campaign for you know his whole life right and now unfortunately we're caught in his vortex of it and it's 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 beyond the pale when you see Larry Kudlow try to say the right thing and but he can't quite get the words out it's so pained his expression is so pained trying to say the right thing I mean, why is this guy allowed to get away with this for so long why is he above the law you know because, congressman I mean let's and, get to it okay but to that point congressman doesn't the president get this opportunity because on some level, he's right in spirit. China has been ripping us off. One of the factors that's led to this extreme income inequality is all of those jobs moving overseas. And the fact that we like to buy all sorts of, low, all sorts of cheap stuff and get it delivered, right? We put our own corner stores out of business when we started shopping on Amazon. And at the very least, the president has acknowledged that, right? I said it jokingly before, but last week, Joe Biden actually said that China is not a huge competitor of ours. We just need to uh, invest uh, more effectively. That's simply not true. Right. First of all, they are a competitor. And they're, a huge one. they're an economy that continues to grow. But the president pointing out correctly that China has taken advantage of us is one thing. And it doesn't take a genius to come to that conclusion. You just have to pay attention. Obama did with TPP. Right. But here's the thing. You actually have to be good at what you do when you take it on. And he's just been terrible. This approach that he's taken, he loves his unilateral authority. That's why he uh, uses tariffs. But then to take our allies, the people with whom we share a lot, to take our allies and put them on the other side of the table, for example, by declaring Canada to be a national security threat, it's preposterous. This is where I think the president's general approach of America first and America alone comes back to bite us. We have a lot of allies who would join with us to take on the bad practices of China. And what the president has done is alienated them to the point that I'm not sure this president in the near future could assemble any sort of a multilateral approach to anything. But that's the approach that he should have taken. He failed to do so, and now he's, he's sort of reaping the, the wrath of that decision. I don't know what the path forward is for this president when it comes to dealing with China. He has blown this opportunity, hopefully not for good. Uh, but he, he, has to, he has to finish this. We're out of time. Kayla, quickly before we go, do we know what's on schedule? What's next for the negotiations now that China's trade reps have left? Well, there's an expectation that the Treasury Secretary and the Trade Representative will go to Beijing perhaps next week. That still isn't confirmed yet. I think the question is, to what extent China escalates its retaliation this week? Treasury Department is expected to auction $237 billion worth of treasuries. And a top editor from China's state-affiliated Global Times says that China might consider sitting this one out, which would have a huge hit on the economy here. I just need to say that to our audience one more time. If we did a massive auction of treasuries and China, one of the biggest buyers on the planet, says we're going to take a pass, that ain't good. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.